Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode in the series The Music of Video Games. I'm so excited that you're here watching and in this series I'm going to go over the music of Final Fantasy 7, Crash Bandicoot, The Sims, Pokemon, you know it's just gonna be a really good fun time. So for today's episode I'm going to take you on a journey so you can hear for yourself how video game music has evolved through time and how technology played a large part in creating the video game music genre that we know it to be today. Are you ready? Let's go! arcade game Space Invaders, released in 1978, making it the first game ever to have a continuous looping track. The track consisted of a descending bass line as well as those super cool sound effects which you hear as you try to destroy the alien spaceships from attacking planet Earth. I actually have never played a game before, but I hear that it is a big deal. So this moment was the beginning of video game music, also known as chip music, but we will get to that in a minute. If any of you have played video games before, I don't need to tell you how the music makes the experience that more engaging. And in the time of arcade games where time is money, any tactic to make the game a play longer was worth the investment. Now I'm going to play some old video game music tracks for you and I'm curious to see what you notice. Now the two main things that I notice are one, the similar tonal quality in the tracks and two, the simplicity and the speed of the compositions. So why would this be the case? To answer my first point, the reason why so many games of the 80s and even the early 90s have a very similar sounding tone and quality is because a lot of the gaming consoles used a PSG chip to generate and synthesize audio signals creating that electronic sound. Also, the tone of the sound could not be changed so it was very dependent on the PSG chip that was in the console. Explaining why so many games of that era sound so similar. As I mentioned before, this type of music is also known as chip music or chip tune, and it is due to those PSG chips. Pretty cool, right? Now this is Yellow Magic Orchestra, a Japanese band considered to be a huge influence on the genre. I don't know about you, but to me that sounds like I could just take that track, plop it into a game and no one will bat an eye. And to me, I think this goes to show the impact that they really did have on the style and genre. So let's address the second point. Why were the compositions quite simple in comparison to other songs and pieces of music of the same time. Well, those PSG chips I just mentioned only had a dedicated amount of channels for the sounds, and many in the 1980s only had between 1 to 8 channels available. That means the composer only had the chance to write a melody, maybe a little bit of harmony, and maybe a little bit of rhythm if they were really lucky. So due to the limited channels available, the composers started writing pieces that were really quite fast in nature in order to catch and keep the gamer's attention. One more factor to consider is the memory space available on the consoles and what we saw emerge from these limitations were the defining characteristics that would become known as chip music. So let me show you some of these characteristics. The PSG chip and the limited space created the characteristic of a track that leaped over over and over to create atmosphere for the gamer. These tracks do not have a definitive beginning and end, like a pop song for example, which I also think is a reason why so many of these video game music songs are just imprinted on my brain. I even know that my mum knows some video game music 
tracks so well just because she heard us play the game and those tracks would just loop over and over and I just think that's kind of funny. Now I can only imagine but as a composer of that time it would have really forced them to think which note is the most important to write down to convey the emotion required due to the limited channels available. Now the video game industry was booming and as a result we got some more great consoles and of course some more great games to go with it. And here is the part where I say I'm a proud Final Fantasy fan and I'm going to use some examples from Final Fantasy 7 in order to demonstrate my points. So as the PSG chips allowed for more sound channels for consoles, composers took this chance to start writing more complex themes for the games. We started to see a theme for the main menu, for the game over theme, for specific characters and towns and so on and so on. And this is known as a leitmotif. A recurring musical phrase that is linked to a specific theme, moment or character and it is used in many mediums such as film and TV as well and a really well known one I think is Darth Vader's theme from Star Wars. But since this is a video about video game music this is where I'm going to go into my Final Fantasy 7 examples. <laughs> But just in case you are not familiar with the story, Final Fantasy VII is a Japanese role-playing game that follows Cloud Strife, a mercenary hired by the group Avalanche to fight an evil corporation called Shinra who are destroying the Earth by using its life source as energy. Pretty interesting plot, right? Now you meet many characters along the way and you try to chase down the bad guy Sephiroth and the use of light motifs in this game is really well done by the composer Nabu Umatsu. For example, every time you are loading up the game you get to hear the main Final Fantasy theme which just sounds really majestic and powerful at the same time and just gets you all amped and excited to play the game. Whenever you enter into battle, you hear a fighting theme. And even individual characters have their own themes as well. Now, one of my favourites is probably Tifa's theme, although I struggle with the idea of saying that's my favourite because there are so many favourites in the game that I honestly just enjoy so many. But I think Tifa's theme is a nice one to show as an example in the video. So, the track is a warm sounding piece of music, and I can disagree with me on this, but I think the music is able to convey to the gamer pieces of information about the character or that town in a way that dialogue cannot. See, don't you think you have a bit of a sense of what the character of Tifa is like just from listening to that? No? Just me? Alright then. <laughs> So as someone who is currently learning to write orchestral tracks, there seems to be some basic building blocks. You have the melody, harmony, counter melody, there's rhythm and texture. And once you have these building blocks, the sounds are then meticulously chosen by the composer to create the emotion and feeling desired for each specific scene and moment. Now in 2020, the Final Fantasy VII Remake won the best score and music. And the same building blocks that were used back in 1997 were used still in the remake with just some additional flares and minor changements to the arrangements, showing that the limitations of the time still resulted in wonderfully written pieces of music. Look at this example. Now as a creative I just find this to be a really great example of how you might think that there's a barrier or this limitation is holding you back but it might actually be the thing that forces you to think creatively, to think differently and push you down a path where you create great work. Now I want to end this video by showing you different clips of video game music beginning from the 1980s all the way up to present modern day. 
and I think hopefully with the knowledge gained from this video if I have done an okay job of doing that you will be able to actually hear and understand why the earlier tracks have a similar tone and why they are more simple and that you will hear when the PSG chips allowed for more complex tracks and when real life instruments were starting to be used as well. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you stick around for the second episode in the series, The Music of Video Games. Until then, bye.